I'm not allowed a day off, am I? <laughs> I'm not allowed to have a day off at all. Um, Arsenal just want to keep throwing us with news consistently whilst I'm meant to be enjoying a day off. This will be the second of three shows. Who knows what Arsenal could. Arsenal might go and sign Messi next this evening and make me do four shows. Um, but uh, no, just, just the three on my day off. Uh, Arsenal signed Matt Ryan on loan from... Brighton, we're going to talk about it, we're going to talk about the signing, we're going to look at the statistics, we're going to break down him in an analytical and statistical way. It's very short notice, so no expert insight, I'm afraid. I have sent a couple of texts out, so we'll see if we get any responses, but it's quite short notice, so I doubt it. Um, but let's crack on with the show and enjoy chatting about Arsenal's brand new goalkeeping signing. First things first, though, a uh, massive thank you to the sponsors, Football Prizes, uh, for sponsoring Let's Talk Arsenal. I just want to highlight this because we are doing the show a little bit later on, but there is just, wow, looking at the clock now, six and a half hours left uh, to people to buy tickets for uh, the signed Vieira shirt. Uh, members, of course, are going to be in a raffle to get a free ticket. Um, but if you'd like to have a chance of winning a signed Vieira shirt, the link is in the description. And uh, and and good luck if with with possibly winning a, a really good signed official shirt with authentication certificate and all of that jazz. So good luck with that if you do end up um, going in for it, which I hope you do. Please uh, please give it some love. Anyway, we're here to obviously talk about um, Matt Ryan, which. If I just give you kind of my initial thoughts before we go into the statistics and stuff, we're going to get some of your thoughts in the chat box as well towards the end of the show. But just to give you my initial reaction to this, I, on one, absolutely stunned that it has come from nowhere. I can't quite remember the last time Arsenal made a signing that was not kind of broadcasted in the usual kind of channels that we see with our usual ITKs and the big journalists tweeting the news out before it actually becomes official. This came out of absolutely nowhere, and I am ecstatic that that is the case. It is so great to see that some deals can still come out of absolutely nowhere that will have no fanfare around them, that nothing gets leaked um, it's really, really good news uh, in that department. And I'm really happy that that is the case. Obviously, it makes it easier going from one Premier League club to another. So if Arsenal do kind of do business between Premier League clubs in the future, we may not hear about it until it's it's kind of announced at the last minute, which is great. Um, but the deal in itself, Matt Ryan is a goalkeeper with plenty of Premier League experience, joined Brighton, I believe it was in 2017. Uh, it was. Uh, has played in the Belgian League, has played for Valencia in Spain as well. Um, and it's just one of those signings that you think, this makes a lot of sense. Arsenal need, um, Arsenal have needed a backup goalkeeper to Runnison. Ryan is a very solid keeper. I saw a lot of people tweeting saying that he is he's Brighton's backup keeper. Sanchez, who's currently in goal for Brighton, effectively was rotated in um, and then it's weird because Steele, who is their number two, Sanchez was their number three keeper. Graham Potter rotated Sanchez in for one week to give Sanchez a go and then went out and said on record that Steele was still the number two keeper and your number two keeper doesn't, for some reason, come in or he's your cup keeper. It's really strange. Um, I don't know if this deal had kind of been in the pipeline for quite a while behind the scenes and that's why Ryan's not been playing. Um, it's interesting that that is the case because Sanchez, who is currently Brighton's now first choice, was their third choice keeper at the club and came in and started playing. And it was all because of rotation. He was given a shot. And basically on his first appearance, he kept a clean sheet and was excellent. It was really good. It was so good that basically Potter had no choice um, but to keep playing Sanchez because he'd been really good in the appearance that he had. And that left Ryan in a situation where he was he went from first choice to third choice in a matter of seconds, all because of rotation, all because of Graham Potter wanting to give uh, Sanchez a chance in goal. And it's it's worked out very well for Arsenal. I don't think it's anything to criticise Ryan about. I think he was unfortunate at Brighton towards that that period because Sanchez just did exceptionally well in the cabinet. It wasn't a case of Ryan being bad at all. It was a case of the replacement. Whenever we came up against Brighton as Arsenal and playing against Ryan in goal... 
I always thought of him as being a very good keeper, a keeper that we'd have to do well to beat. And Arsenal's record against Brighton has been dreadful. Before we beat them earlier on in the season, we hadn't beaten them in their last five attempts, Ryan being in goal, I believe, for all of those. And he's a very solid keeper. It makes Runnison the third choice for the rest of the season. And of course, if we do make this uh, a permanent deal in the summer, which is feasible because he will want, if he's happy being kind of the number two at Arsenal rather than the number three at Brighton, like you can't imagine that he would not be okay with that. He's going to try and fight for the number one position. He's been a Premier League number one for a number of years. It's just a really good move. It's it's just a really good move for Arsenal. Um, it's it's a cheap deal on six months. It, it gives you kind of a period to assess him as a player before you then make maybe a, a more permanent deal for him in the summer. However, he isn't homegrown, um, being Australian, of course, the Australian number one keeper, something else we haven't talked about. He's not a homegrown keeper, which means that Arsenal may look to pursue a more homegrown target in the summer over Ryan. That is one of the reasons why we may not look to bring him in on a permanent deal. Anyway, that kind of covers my feelings about it. We'll go have a look at some of the statistics of Ryan um, before we get some of your thoughts in the chat box. So this, if we go into this season, which is 2020, 20, uh, 21, I very ever rarely look at goalkeeping stats on Y Scout. It's just not something that we've done. So this is going to be uh, an experience for myself. Now, the most important thing, let's have a look at his heat map. <laughs> let's have a look at goalkeeper's heat map. I mean, it'd be a little bit worrying. I mean, from that heat map, what can we say? Well, he clearly skews towards the left. He's a more of a left wing goalkeeper than he is uh, a right wing goalkeeper. <laughs> This is hilarious. Um, anyway, that doesn't matter. <laughs> we just love looking at heat maps. Uh, XG, uh, XCG, so the expected conceded goals, 1.22 per match. Playing at Brighton, I'm not surprised it's at that. That's the thing you have to remember when looking at these stats, is that he was playing at Brighton. It's actually kind of the saves that you're making in each game, which is interesting. If your saves number is kind of higher, then then you're in the you're in the golden part there. So 1.59 saves per match. 36.8% of those are with reflex saves. Uh, it's obviously where he has to move out the way. And he's not just having a shot straight at him. Um, exits, which is where he's taking the ball outside of the box. I mean, they can have a look at that. Uh, just have a look at the stats of that game. Oh no, we don't want to play. Don't want to play video. Don't want to do that because otherwise I'll get copyrighted. Um, <laughs> long passes, seven point three to short passes, ninety nine percent pass accuracy on short passes is what you'd expect from a goalkeeper. I wouldn't expect to see too much lower uh, than anywhere near close to hundred percent for short passes. But long passes, sixty seven point eight percent accuracy is, is quite good for his long balls out into the wide areas when he needs to play them. The ones against Leicester there, seven out of seven long passes into those wide areas. It's just solid. Like It's, it's goal conceded. He conceded three uh, away to Leicester. But again, these are really kind of tricky ones to look at. Let's look at the previous season, 2019-20. Uh, his XCG was lower. Uh, his saves was 2.62 per game, nearly making three saves per game, and nearly 60% of those were with reflexes. So he, he slightly dipped this season for Brighton, which maybe has been part of the reason as to why he um, has, has been rotated, maybe. Um, long passes, 70% accuracy, short passes, 99.3% accuracy, goal kicks on average, 6.45 per game. It's if we're thinking, if we're being very kind of <laughs> honest about analyzing the statistics of a goalkeeper, it's really tricky because every goalkeeper is playing at a different club that have different amount of goals conceded. What's a really good thing, I suppose, to do is to if we go on to transfer market and look at Matt Ryan's kind of statistics on transfer market and get an idea of the amount of clean sheets that he's got during his time at, at Brighton. It's a good way to do it. Let me just throw this up on the screen again for you. Here we go. Um, and if we have a look at the amount of clean sheets he's conceded whilst there. Uh, so last season, uh, he kept, is that two clean sheets? Just two clean sheets playing for Brighton. And Sorry, this is this season. Two clean sheets out of 11 games conceded 19 goals, which is quite a lot, again, for Brighton. So make of that what you will. They've been dreadful this year. Um, in fact, I don't think they've won a single game at home. Maybe they won one game at home all of 2020. Um, nine clean sheets in the previous season, which he was obviously that's on a higher run than it was at the moment. He would have been on record for four this season had he been there for the whole time. 
um, and conceded 54 goals in 38 games. So you're looking at 1.5 goals conceded per game-ish around that. Again, you can read so kind of too much into, into uh, statistics around a goalkeeper. It's really hard to do a, a tactical breakdown on a, on a goalkeeper because it, it's so situational. It's so dependent on on where players are, the clubs that they're in. But we, we know from that that he likes a short pass out from the back. He can play out from the back, which is really positive. Um, under pressure, he, he's, he's never been one that sticks in my memory as a keeper that doesn't do well uh, under pressure. So for me, I, I think it's a perfectly reasonable deal uh, for Arsenal to do. And I'm not going to reach into the statistics and get any more in depth about that because we would just end up reading two more into it. So last five to 10 minutes of the show, I want to hear some of your thoughts on Matt Ryan coming in. I'm going to scroll up to the top of the chat and see if there's been some good comments about you guys. Um, Teng Wang says, Arteta and Co are doing the right things this window. Uh, Juan says, Tom, your day off is going down the trash with good news. <laughs> I know, it's like I'm, not, I'm getting no time off on my day off to do this stuff. Wesley says, so we got experienced captain of Australian national side and his contract expires in the end of next season. Maybe he could even stay. He signed a five-year deal in 2017. So his deal expires at the end of next season. So he has a one year left after this season. So... If you were going to go for him, it would cost very little. But as far as I'm aware, his contract runs out at the end of next season, not at the end of this season. Um, that's what you get when you have no mole in the club, says Lord, suggesting that now we've got rid of the supposed mole in the club, we're able to keep things under a little bit more wraps. Goose said he's been number one at Brighton since they came up. Decent enough business. Matt Thornton says if he impresses, he's good. Again, I, don't, I thought, I'm sure his contract runs out at the end of next season, not this season. Like, I'm sure it runs out next next season rather than this one. I, I thought he signed a five-year deal in 2017. Uh, Ivan King says, very good signing. Help cover and pushes Leno. And most importantly, is only on loan. Not much money until the summer. And we go for a good, younger, and maybe a long-term keeper for the future. Um, nine clean sheets all season, 38 games at Brighton's level. is actually considered quite good by Archie, which is a very good point. Alex says, Tom will be analysing the referee's heat map next. <laughs> it's just hilarious looking at a goalkeeper in heat map. It's quite funny. Uh, Dylan says, as an Aussie, I'm so happy to see Ryan in our red and white. I'm trying to think back about Arsenal, Australian Arsenal players. Can you think back and tell me an Australian Arsenal player? So I'm really trying to rack in my brains and I can't, can't think of one off the top of my head. I'm probably missing a really obvious one. Um, Cesar Zapeda says his passing is good. Brighton used to play the same as Emery. Ryan was obligated to play from the back, so that's a positive. Cesar also adds that by saying people are dissing Ryan. Mans can't compete with Leno. <laughs> I don't get why people are criticising Ryan. It's just fashionable, isn't it? If you don't, if you don't like Arsenal because you're you prefer to be a little bit dramaous. You're gonna you're gonna criticize him. Jamie says another bang average loan signing. Joins Dennis Suarez, Pablo Marie, Cedric, and Danny Ceballos in the list of bang average loan signings. I think that's very harsh on Pablo Marie, Jamie. I think that's exceptionally harsh on Danny Ceballos as well. I mean, without Danny Ceballos' partnership with Xhaka, we don't go and win the FA Cup last season. So I think you're being very harsh. Uh Dennis Suarez obviously barely played, was injured for most of the time there. Cedric. I'm not very keen on the Cedric deal, as people know. But Pablo Marie, I don't know what you're talking about, Jamie. I think you're talking about your backside, son. Glenn Cook says, we're establishing a good relationship with Brighton, hopefully paving the way for a future transfer of Basuma. Yeah, we always like to read into <laughs> read into things a little bit too much um, in regards to, I suppose, the, the relationships between clubs. We'll be signing... Uh, Eden Hazard from Real Madrid next because we're getting Odegaard. But no, it's important to establish a good deal with a, a good relationship with a club. We don't have that with Saint-Étienne anymore, it seems. But yeah, I think that uh, I, I think it's certainly something that um, we can look at as a positive that we've kind of built that relationship between the two clubs. I'm trying to think of any players that have come from Brighton before that we've sent to Brighton. Um, nothing is coming to mind, though. Um I am correct that his deal ends in 2022. I thought it was. I thought it did. I thought he signed a five-year deal uh, and it runs out in 2022. Um, 
Alfred says, Willian to cover at left back. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think you're, you're stretching, mate. I think you're stretching. Jamie, let's see. What you, obviously, I always appreciate the, the opposite opinions, even if I, I don't agree with it. He says, yeah, I see your point about Marie. He's decent, but I don't rate him as highly as others, but still only a squad player. And that's fine, Jamie, because we've got Gabriel. Like, we've got Gabriel there. All we needed from um, Marie to come in, who has now been made obviously permanent, is the fact that we've now got him as a player that can cover that position really solidly. And he has done when he's been called upon as well, which I've been very happy about. Um, Sam says, your day off is turning into a day on. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, I don't get days off, it seems. Uh, Pez Guna says, I haven't seen much of Odegaard. Is he to come in and play in the Smith Rowe role or Sabas? Well, if you want to learn my thoughts on, on uh, Odegaard, Check out the couple of two shows that we did before this one and uh, and you can get my thoughts on that. Maxwell says, Brighton, take Ryan on loan and we will let you have Basuma in the summer. Yeah, we can only pray, Maxwell. We can only pray. Ty says, do you think he will play any games? I actually do. I think that he will play. Um, I think he'll play in the FA Cup um, if, we, if we keep progressing. Because Leno, whilst I always kind of get the idea of our rotation, I think that it's absolutely fine to play Ryan in the FA Cup. Give Leno a bit of a break because as a goalkeeper, you've got to be like fully focused the whole time. And if you're playing every other week, every other game, sorry, you can, it can take a mental toll on you being the keeper. So why not put him in against Southampton tomorrow, see how he does and uh, and go from there, I think. Um, <laughs> and we have to say, you know what? Uh, it's, it's, it's credit to Edu. Um, Again, we talked about this. I said that signings are a bit of a bonus this window. We've got a goalkeeper in, which is, for me, was the priority because Runnison was not good enough to be Arsenal's backup. And also, if we manage to get Odegaard in by the end of the, the window or even by the end of the day with the way things are accelerating so quickly, again, another really good move from Edu. He's got players out. He's bringing players in. And you've got to hold your hands up and say, fair play, Edu. For, for doing this window right. And we said, we said on the pod, if he starts doing stuff, we'll give him credit. And he started doing stuff. So fair play to Edu uh, and Arteta working in combination to get these deals done. Very good. Ed Welch says, what are your thoughts on the links to Brian Bertrand as backup for Kieran Tierney? I think it's it's not a bad thing at all. I think he's 31, turns 32 soon, I think. Um, and he's got to be a free. It's good cover. He's solid. It's a Premier League experience. It's, um, and, and, so, and kind of consistent as well. It's not like a signing. It's not like the Cedric signing from Southampton where he wasn't playing. Bertrand's been playing for Southampton and playing well consistently for quite a long time. So I think it's 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 a good deal uh, for Arsenal to do as cover, as cover and depth for sure. Uh, Nor says Ryan's signing really came out of nowhere. Didn't expect it at all, but he has Premier League experience and a decent backup keeper. Um, Cesar says Edu was desperate since he saw fans full raging Hulk. I don't think that, honestly, I don't think Edu and that pay too much attention to how ragey the fans get, to be honest. Um, I think they've been working behind the scenes really well this January. They've done a lot of business in what is typically a very quiet window and they're doing some really good work. So fair play. Um, <laughs> um, Texas says, great piece of business from our sexy Spaniard and Edu. Like you said, they are practicing what they are preaching. Let's go. David Morsey said, Tom, would you sign him permanently? I would wait to see what he's like this. I wouldn't want to make a comment on whether I'd sign him Permanently, my initial reaction is no, just because I think we should probably try and target a homegrown keeper in the summer. Uh, Adam says, great addition and fantastic backup to Leno. Feel like if Leno gets a slight injury, less fans would be concerned. Feel like if Odegaard comes in as backup, we can get a left back and I'd be very happy. I mean, if we get a backup left back as well before the end of the window, which is now eight, nine days away, we've still got over a week left of the window, there's still scope for Arsenal to do something. I think that it'd be an absolutely 10 out of 10 window, to be honest, uh, considering what the window is and what you can get and the fact that you can't really get our main targets to cover the positions that we needed to get covered, to get the players out and then we needed to get out. It's it's really kind of shaping up to be a nice January window. Absolutely fantastic. Um, Bulldog says, Tom, he's down in the squad as homegrown due to his mother being Scottish. Is that true? That doesn't sound right. 
I mean, I'm sure you had to like come through like in the UK kind of youth systems. I'm sure. Um, let me just check though and see if that's a case. Um, nothing. I can't even check on Wikipedia. It doesn't say anything about his mum, but I don't know if that's true. Uh, but if he does count as a homegrown player, amazing. Um, fair play. I mean, let me just check. Uh, let me just type in Ryan homegrown onto Twitter and hopefully something will come up. Um, oh, no, that's been deleted. Oh, uh, apparently I've seen someone say that he is. I've then seen someone delete a tweet saying that he was homegrown. And I don't really know why anyone would make it up if it was true. I've just seen Kaya Kaya say that he's not home. Mark Ryan isn't homegrown. No. So it sounds like he's not homegrown from the sounds of things, from what I'm looking at. Um, No, he's not. He's not listed in Brighton's homegrown players either. So, um, yeah. I don't know why that was a rumour. He's not homegrown. So he doesn't count as homegrown at all. Um, Pan Rasta says, Tom, should Matt start in the FA Cup against Southampton, giving Leno a rest? I, I don't see why not. Um, it's all right, Bulldog. A lot of stuff gets thrown around on Twitter that turns out not to be true. Uh, San Trester says, had to check my calendar, thought I may have gone into hibernation and woke up in the summer window. <laughs> it just literally came out of nowhere. Absolutely mental. It came out of absolutely nowhere. Absolutely crazy stuff. Um, so I think it's great. It's I was going to use the word romantic. I don't think it's romantic, but I think it's 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 just nice to see a signing come out of nowhere that no one's called, no one's jumped on, no one's been able to try and claim. But yeah, um, it's great. Edward says the mole leaked that he was homegrown. <laughs> deary me, deary, deary me. Um, who will not be registered in February? Will it be Mustafi, uh, says Chris? It's a good question. Someone is going to get left out. Um, we've obviously got off Socrates and we've got rid of Socrates. We've got rid of Kalasanach and we've got rid of Ozil. Saliba was never in there, I don't think. Or was Saliba in there? I'm not sure if Saliba was registered because he was under a certain age. So I don't think that counts. So you would have lost two, which we were two over. So those two have gone. Kalasanach, you imagine, would be taken up by Odegaard. So Ryan is an is one over. So surely either someone's going to be moved on or they won't register someone like Runnison and then they'd use like one of the youth keepers as backup. But I think that surely they wouldn't do that. Um, and Matt Macy, but he was a homegrown player anyway. So we lost a homegrown player in Matt Macy going. Um, interesting to see. Unless they send Runnison out on loan somewhere, that could be something. <laughs> Um, which I think actually some of you in the chat box are suggesting. Um, so yeah, it's going to be, it will be intriguing to use a different word um, to see who misses out. If anyone, maybe Runnison goes out on loan, like a lot of you are suggesting in the chat. Where he goes, we don't know. Third choice keeper will be a youth goalkeeper, you imagine, because they don't count towards your homegrown status. And even if they are, um, you can still play them under a certain age. So the likes of Onkonkwo, um, Hein, these guys uh, could be counting towards that. Abodi says, Matt Ryan isn't a bad player, Premier League experience and full international, but in my opinion, we still should sign a Freddie Woodman for free in the summer. After Ryan's loan, Freddie Woodman should be our number two. I agree. I think that's a good way to look at it. Um, will Odegaard get the number 10 until the end of this summer? That'll be interesting to see. Um, who gets the number 10 shirt? That's, yeah. Will Will he get the number 10 shirt? Would you give him the number 10 shirt? It's I, I'm kind of thinking that someone needs to earn that number 10 shirt before it's kind of given so willingly. But, uh, but yeah, very interesting. Um, TD says, Matt Ryan has a Scottish mother and therefore in possession of a UK passport. His, his move to Arsenal will not take up one of the foreign player spots, says TD Shifts. I appreciate the donation, but I don't think that's right, TD. Um, and I think that Charles Watts has apparently tweeted out that he is not uh, counting towards a homegrown status. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know if that's actually the case. Charles Watts, let me just check if he has actually tweeted that out. Homegrown, Ryan. Uh, Matt Ryan is available tomorrow. Uh, he hasn't actually tweeted anything about it yet. So, no, not seeing any tweets regarding 
him being homegrown at all. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think he counts as homegrown. So it's, yeah, at all. It's something that needs to be clarified for sure. Um, but yeah, can he not be homegrown, but not foreign? <laughs> um, exactly. Can he be non-homegrown, but not foreign? It's He's Australian. And I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter if you've got like lineage to to homegrown. You have to have come through the youth ranks of a British club to count as homegrown. I'm, I'm sure that's the case. I'm so sure that's the case. Um, so yeah, um, we'll, we'll, we'll get it clarified for sure. Uh, I don't think it matters if he's got a citizenship to like to, in that sense. I'm not sure if that counts. So. <laughs> We will wait and see for that to be clarified. If Charles Watts has said it is in his YouTube video, maybe that's the case. But I've also seen some other people say that he isn't. And he was listed as he wasn't listed in Brighton's homegrown quota. So we will have to wait and see to, to find out whether or not he counts. I will tweet it out from the account as soon as we get a, uh, a legitimate and final answer on that. If he is, great news. Uh, if he isn't, then it doesn't matter because he's on loan until the summer. But um, I mean, it does matter in a, in a way because obviously that would free up the last spot for Odegaard to take and we wouldn't have to lose Mustafi or lose anyone else. So, uh, so yeah, interesting. Uh, Chris says, Tom, do you even know where Canada is? Yeah, I was a geography teacher, mate. It's nice it's in, you know, it's south of Uruguay. Um, anyway, that'll wrap up the show. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, there's another show uh, this evening, of course, um, which will be at five o'clock UK time, which is all around you guys in the chat box and uh, getting your thoughts and questions at 5 p.m. UK. If you haven't already had uh, a bought a ticket for the raffle of the signed Patrick Vieira shirt from our sponsors, Football Prizes, make sure you get on that. Um, I think there's something like 40-something tickets been sold, so you could have a one in 50 chance of getting a signed with a authenticated certificate attached to it. Um, Patrick Vieira shirt. So if you want to, the link is in the description. Thank you to our sponsors. I'll be again throwing out and the members, I will reveal who has won the free ticket into the raffle um, at five o'clock on the show. So make sure you tune in to find out if you have in fact won the free ticket. Um, I will see you again very, very soon. It's been a pleasure to speak to you as always. And as always, up the Arsenal. <laughs>